Most people don't realize how much better the new card visual in Power BI just got with the March 25 release. Because now we can build applications like this, where we show the key information for different items, different employees, regions, or products, and we can nicely search for it. And the big change is that we can show either different formatting or different images for each card. And that was not possible before. And that is crucial to set up an application like this. So let's go over all of the steps to make this happen. So we are going to build this example over here where we show the key information for different employees with some easy search functionality there at the top where we have some slicers, drop down slicers for the office and position. And here I use a text search slicer, which is also a newer slicer type where I can, for example, type in a employee name like Eric, and maybe I also want to see the key information for Allison and the cards for these employees nicely pop up. Now let's go over all of the steps, but you need to make sure that you're on the March 25 version of Power BI or later. Now here's a starting point. I've already set up the slices because what we are focusing on is the new card visual. So let's insert one and let's position it nicely underneath it. And here I want to create a breakdown. So I have different categories for each employee. So I'm going to look for the employee name or ID right now. Here I have name and surname. Let's go for that. And here for the data, I'm just going to pick the same field. So also just the name. Now let's get to the point straight away. What is the big change in this March 25 version that is so special? Well, it all has to do with recognizing the filter context of the item that we are looking at so that we can use conditional formatting to, for example, apply a different color there for Alison versus Claire or show a different image here for Alison than for Claire. And that was not properly working in previous versions. Now, let me show you with a simple example. I'm going to go over here to the data pane and here you see I have conditional formatting measure, which just checks oh, what name do we have in the filter context. Now, if it's Alison Hill, then we turn light blue, otherwise light gray. Now that measure, I want to use to set the color of the headers. So let's go here to formatting and then small multiples headers. And then here we have the background. Okay, now let's turn it on. And you see here we can choose a background color like pink. All right. Now I want to set this dynamically using conditional formatting. So I click here on the FX button and then field value. And now I'm going to search for that measure CF test. All right. Now let's click on OK and see here we have light blue for Allison and then light gray for all of the other employees. Now that was not possible before. And the same thing we can do for images. So if I go back to the formatting options of our visual, then images, then here we can turn the image on and then click here on image type, image URL. And here either use a similar measure as before, but then I'm returning the correct image URL links. Or you can also just pick a column where you have the links to the images, which I do. So I can just search for image. Now here we have a column image link and it will always take the first one. And for example, here we just have one row. So and we get the correct image popping up. Now, just to make sure that you get what I'm saying with these image URLs, let's go here to table view and let me scroll to the right. Now you see over here, I have all different links to images for each employee. That's it. And these need to be publicly accessible links. Okay, now let's go back here to the formatting options because I don't want my images to show that big. So I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Let's put the size to 100 pixels. That's already better. And I want to have these pictures on the left hand side of the names. Okay, so I'm going to go to position, left of text. There you go. And I'm going to increase the space between the image and the text. Uh, so the name that you see on the right hand side. So let's put this to 30 pixels. Now then let's go here to call out values and let's make these call out values a little bit smaller. Uh, so the name's a bit smaller and let's go for different fonts like Segui. Okay. Now then here for the labels there, we could show the position, right? So the position of each employee. Now to do that, we first of all have to select the series. Then we go here to text and also there we have an FX button. So let's click on it. And now I want to have the position. So let's search for position. There you go. And now 
I get Amazon sales specialist for every employee. And that is exactly the problem that we had before with the conditional formatting and with the images. The thing is, well, here for the labels, it seems that it's not fixed just yet. Well, again, it's a, it's a preview option. So hopefully with the next update, they also fix the labels. Okay, so therefore we cannot rely on the labels just yet. So I'm just going to turn that off. And instead of that, we can add extra information using the reference labels, which is also nice. Okay, but before we're going to do that, let's clean it up because now we have Alison Hill here for the headers as well as over here on the other side of the picture. So the headers we don't really need. Now, if we go here, then you see they have added more options, which is actually kind of nice, right? So we can put the headers also on the right hand side, at the top, at the bottom, etc. And so all extra features, but there's no feature to just turn the headers off, which probably would also have been nice. And so even if we turn off the background and the title, etc., they're still there, okay? So what I would do is put them on the left, then just rotate the text so that it doesn't take that much space. And then we can just uh, make it transparent. Uh, so here, the title, transparency to 100%. All right. And then let's also turn the borders off, which we can do here under small multiples layout. And then here we have grid lines and borders, all that stuff we turn off. And I would want to switch the style from table to cards. Just looks a little bit nicer. Now, that actually looks already pretty good. It's just that we need some extra information about these employees, and maybe we also don't need that background. Huh? Let's turn that off. All right. And for now, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller, and then later on, we can add more employees uh, to the right hand side. Okay. Now, to get that extra information in, we can use reference labels. Now, reference labels you find over here under reference labels, then select the series, we only have one series uh, with the name, and to that series, you add reference labels. Okay, now what do you want to show the information of? Maybe the position, right? So let's search for position. And you see that information nicely popped up at the bottom of each card. Now, of course, we have to play around with the formatting a bit more, but let's add more. Let's also add the office. So here we have office. And then I also want to have, let's say, the email address. So let's search for that one. And last but not least, let's add the phone number. So there you go. Now it doesn't perfectly fit. So let's maybe make our lives a little bit easier. Let's go here to small multiples layout. And then I want to have a single column. And I'm just going to show two cards for the time being. All right, so now we have that extra information nicely visible. Now let's go back over here to the reference labels because well, I don't like it that it says first position, first office. So one option that we have is to just turn the titles off for all of the labels of that series. All right, so if I turn it off, you see, already looks much cleaner, okay? Now maybe later on we can bring it back so that we can put, for example, little icons right in front of it, all right? Now, for now, I just leave it as it is. And then I also want to turn off the background color. It's not really necessary. Here we have the divider line, but we can keep it. And for example, go for a lighter color. And then over here, maybe we turn off, ignore the padding, all right? And then here for that extra information, let's go to value. And then instead of black, it would go a little bit lighter. Yeah, so maybe a light gray. All right, I'm kind of happy how this starts to look, but I want to emphasize the position a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm gonna go over here and select the first position label, then go over here to value, and maybe let's go for Sigui UI semi bold so that it stands out just a bit more. All right, now that looks pretty good, but let's make some further changes. Let's go here to guards, and then here I would like to, first of all, add a little bit of extra padding. Yeah, so custom, and let's go for 20 pixels of bedding on each side. And what I also like is if the shape has rounded corners. So I'm gonna go here to round rectangles and let's make it 10 pixel. All right. And over here for the border, a little bit too dark. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. Uh, for example, that light gray color looks good. All right. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is to line it up here on the left hand side. And then let's go back over here to the small multiples layout. And here I want to change the grid. So instead of single column, let's go for grid. Then I want to have max number of rows two, max number of columns three, and then we can stretch it all the way to the right. So that's nicely 
lined up over there on the right. You see, by default, it's paginated. Huh? So over here, you get that arrow up and down or left to right. You can change that from the overflow. And here, we can also go for continuous scroll. Now, uh, if you go for paginated, the problem is you don't see on which page you are. And so you don't know if there are still three, four, five, six, 100 pages to go, right? So that's a big downside. And so it would be nice to have that feature also added here uh, so that you know which page you are uh, if you go for paginated. So therefore, I don't really like it at the moment. So therefore, I'm switching to continuous scroll. All right, and another thing to watch out for is that if you would now change, for example, to a certain position, uh, so let's say Amazon's sales specialist, let's pick a few like this. Now, if I pick a few, you see the cards resize. And maybe this is not what you want. It can be nice, but maybe it's nice if they just keep the same size. Uh, so if you want to keep the size, what you need to do is go over here to small multiples, layout, and then fix the number of tiles and turn that on. So that if you change the search filter now, you see uh, the cards don't change their size. All right, good. Now let's undo that filter. Now the next thing that we can play around with is also the spacing, right? So over here under small multiples, go to layout. Here we have customized spacing, turn it on. And here we can, for example, increase the spacing between the rows, okay, just like this, and space between the columns. Well, maybe I want to have zero, all right? Now probably I have to shift over here. There's a little bit to the left and to the right so that it's nicely aligned. All right, now I like how this looks, but maybe you want to go even one step further by adding little icons there for the office, the email, and the phone number. Now this is possible. You just have to use, under reference labels, the title. Now let's turn the title on, but you have to be a little bit careful what is selected. So series, first name and surname is selected. And here we have the label, first position. Now for that one, I actually, do not want to add an icon. So I'm going to skip over that one. And let's maybe start with an easy one like the email. All right, so first email. And then here we can turn the title on, switch to custom. And here we can write whatever we want. All right, so I can just say email, colon, and then followed by the email. Now, this is not what I have in mind, so I don't think it's better. Instead of that, we're gonna go for icon, and this needs to be Unicar icon, and you can search for one, or you can use the Windows key dot, and then search for email or mail, and then you get different mail icons. So I could pick this one, all right? You see, it nicely pops up right there in front of the email, all right? Now, we can also add some extra spaces, but the spaces get deleted. So that means you have to use some other empty character. So you can go to emptycharacter.com and just copy an empty character from there that does not get deleted, but looks like a space. So you simply copy it from the website, go back to Power BI, and then here we can add some empty spaces right after our icon. So with Control V, let me put in some extra spaces and you see we are creating some extra space there between the icon and the email address. All right, now also we can use that same trick to indent everything from the left-hand side. So if you think, oh, actually, I wanna have this in the middle, well, there's alignment to the middle. However, there's nothing that says, okay, left align, and then just increase the padding here for the reference label, labels from the left. So therefore, this gives you that flexibility, right? And we can use that. So if I go here to, let's say the first, uh, not first position, but first office, and then turn the title on here as well, switch to custom, and then change the text to just empty characters. Let's just put in about 10 of these characters. And you see, now we have indented the city to the right. Now we can do the same also here for the others. Look for nice icons and make it look like this. And ta-da, that looks pretty good if you ask me. And it's really nice to use in combination with slices. Huh? So over here I have a text slicer, I can just Search for Emmy, and then Emily Payne pops up, all right? And also here you can uh, turn in the formatting multi-search on, right? So that you can, for example, also look for Ari, well, then Eric pops up. 
And this idea is very applicable also to other sectors and other departments besides HR. And to build it is very similar, right? So if you want to show key information for different projects or different products or different cities, you can set it up a similar way. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video and you want to maybe dive a little bit deeper into cards or different uh, design tips and tricks in Power BI, then check out these videos over here. If you want to build reports with me from beginning to the end and learn all of my Power BI tips and tricks and how I develop my reports uh, with everything that you need to know to make your Power BI projects a success, then check out my design transformation program over here. If you are newer to Power BI and you just want to improve your general Power BI skills, then check out my other training, the PL300 certification course for Power BI. I bet that you get a lot of value from it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.